In this video we're going to be looking at filtering data in ArcGIS Pro and the way we do that is with definition queries. So in this project we've got a couple of layers, cities and airports for this area of Asia. Uh, we can view them in the map window. We've also got the attribute tables open. So if we wanted to run a query to just look at cities for a particular uh, country we would first uh, go to the properties for the layer uh, and then we would select this definition query option and then a new definition query button and this gives us our query builder which allows us to define our filter so from the first drop down what we get is a list of all the field headings for this particular layer and we need to decide which field we're going to run this filter over uh, and in this case we're going to use country name so we'd select that now from the second drop down we get a number of options for the type of filter we're going to run and in our case we're looking for a specific value so we're going to select is equal to and then the third drop down gives us a list of all of the values currently in this particular field and we can just pick one and in this case we're going to pick Thailand so show us all the cities that are in Thailand and that is the filter applied and everything else is excluded and we can see that in the map and also in the attribute table so if we want to run a different uh, a filter we can go back uh, to the properties and we can go back to that same uh, definition query we're going to hit the edit button and we can actually um, modify it so we've got is equal to so if we change that to is not equal to so country name not equal to Thailand and apply that um, what we now get is everything except that what is in Thailand so all cities in Thailand are excluded so in this way we can run a filter however we want so some of the other options um, so if we change this to status for example and we select contains the text so we're no longer looking for a specific value but we're looking for a piece of text so we type in uh, some text here enclave we're going to be returned any cities that have uh, the word enclave somewhere in the value uh, for this particular field that we're running this filter over and there it is now it happens to be at the end um, of the value but it could be anywhere so we can just search for um, particular pieces of text rather than just exact values so again it depends on the type of filter uh, that you select from the query so if we go back to the properties now and we're going to edit our uh, definition query once again and this time uh, we're going to select population or pop for short and this is a number field and again just showing a different type of filter so we're now dealing with numbers so um, if we select is greater than um, and then what we again we get a, a listing of the values that are in there but we can just type a value in and if we put in 5 million so we're going to look for all cities that have a population of over 5 million and we get seven cities returned so we can uh, not just look for specific values but with numbers we can look for um, ranges of numbers as well um, so let's go back to our uh, definition query once more and if we want to add another field to run the definition over we can use this add clause and that's going to add another row to our query builder and we can choose another field to include in our uh, query so in this case country name and is equal to and Thailand again now it doesn't matter what order these are in whether pop is on top or country name is on top so let's just change this to 200,000 so pop or population um, so this we've defined a query to look for all cities in Thailand with a population of over 200,000 and we get six cities in return 
So what if we wanted to include another clause, if we wanted to include another country? So let's go back to our um, definition again. And if we want to include another country, say we wanted to also look for um, cities in Malaysia, we would add a clause. And then once again, we can uh, select country name. And this time we're going to put in a, a, a second country. So let's put in Malaysia. So this definition is looking for all cities over 200,000 in Thailand and Malaysia. However, we're getting zero returns. So nothing has been returned. So why is that? And the reason is this and here. Um, so let's have a look at the definition query in a little more detail. So looking at that part of the definition, we've got country name equals Thailand and country name equals Malaysia. And the way this works is the first part of the definition will be evaluated first. And the item will be evaluated to see if this is true. If it is not true and it does not equal Thailand, the item will be excluded and move on to the next one. And this sequence continues until it finds at Thailand and this part of the definition is true and when that happens and only when that happens is the second part of the definition evaluated to see if the country name equals Malaysia and of course it doesn't because it cannot equal both Thailand and Malaysia so it is excluded and this is the point about and linking together definition both parts of the definition have to be true for an item to be included. So what we need to do is actually to change the AND to an OR. And this changes the definition to either one being true and it will be included. Um, and that, So that's what we'll do here. Now sequencing is important so if we hold down the control key we can select the country name definitions and there's this group icon at the top and that groups them together. So what we have now is pop population greater than 200,000 and and then the country names group. Now the and between pop and country names is important because if that were an or then any city over 200,000 regardless of country would be included because remember with an or any part of the definition is true the item is included by having an and between those we mean that both the country names group and the pop need to be true so if we apply that definition um, what we'll now get is all cities in Thailand and Malaysia with a population of over 200,000 so we cannot use an AND to link two definitions which are looking for an exact value on the same field. But let's have a look at this airports layer and let's define a definition uh, for this layer um, and explore that. So in this layer we've got a field called built opened and this is a date field. Um, so if we select that and we get a few different uh, types of filters we can run um, and if we select is on or after um, and let's pick the year 1990 so anything 1990 or after and then on the same field again uh, we'll pick is on or before and again this these two are linked by an and um, and then pick the year 2000 so uh, any airports built after 1990 and before 2000. Um, and even though we're using an AND here, and we'd want to use an AND, um, because we're looking for a range and not exact values, uh, this will work. Um, and in fact, it gives us uh, four airports are returned. So um, there was actually quite a lot of nulls in that built opened uh, field so let's explore that a bit more so let's go back to cities and let's open the properties and uh, rather than edit the last um, definition query we're going to create a new one and you can do that you can have a number of definition queries here so we select is null and not is equals to null because that won't work 
it can't be equal to an absence of value. But to search for missing values, we may need to also search for an empty string. And if these are present, they will be shown in the third dropdown, as this is a listing of all the values in the field. Of course, we change the linkage definition to OR, as we're looking for either OR of these definitions. Then we tick on this definition, and you can toggle on between different filters uh, on this data set in this way. And you can even rename the definition query to easily identify what it does. And we get two results where we have missing values, and this can be useful for looking where you perhaps need to add some values to complete your data set. The reason there might be an empty string is possibly there was a value there before and it was deleted. And if it's a null, there probably has never been a value entered. So we can see how we can toggle on and off uh, different uh, definition queries to apply different filters. But another option to preserve different filters is to copy the layer so we have two identical layers with filters applied over them. So with this first layer, I'm going to remove the definition query so no filters applied, and it's a complete data set. I'm going to rename the layer to make that clear. With the second layer, I'm going to just have one definition query. And again, rename the layer to make it clear this is a subset of the cities layer. So in this way, we can tick on different layers to see the filters applied without having to go into the properties. And these are two layers pointing to the same data set. And if we edit the data, those edits will apply uh, to both layers. Another option of switching between filters without opening the properties is to go to the data ribbon. With a layer highlighted, any definition queries will be displayed from this drop-down. And the filter can be turned on and off, or between different filter definition queries if there are more than one. And in fact, if multiple layers have definition queries called the same name, you can highlight them in the contents and then turn on and off these queries for those multiple layers. Uh, so in this way you can create whole scenarios to turn uh, on and off uh, the filters. If you want to create a permanent copy of the subset um, that has been created by the definition query, uh, you can right-click data and export features. If this is filter, a filtered layer, only the subset is going to be exported. So you will have a feature class or shapefile with only those items. Uh, we can also, of course, save the filtering by creating a layer file through the share ribbon. This doesn't export the data, but it creates a pointer to the data with the definition query defined. And that can be brought into other projects. So that's all about filtering and definition queries. Um, I hope you found that useful and there'll be more videos coming soon.